2K24 has changed again without telling us, of course, and with proof, plus a lot more. So lock in. It's been a while since I did a news video. We have a lot to talk about. Whatever you got to do, make sure that like button's blue. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Let's get right into the news. So J.A. Bridgeforth went to Twitter and he said, I've spent $669.95 on 2K24. Parentheses includes the price of the game. And that got a lot of people talking about how much money they have spent in the comments on 2K so far this year. You see from the quote tweet, this guy said, if you want to know why 2K and other companies who are greedy continue with the microtransaction BS year in and year out. Look no further than this thread. In some of the comments, you can even see people applauding Ja for only spending $669 on 2K24. 2K is raking it in. So you can go ahead and cross me off. I've spent more than that. I'm a content creator. This is my job. But I've also got friends that have spent hundreds of dollars and have multiple builds this year so far, and it's only November. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section how many builds have you made so we can kind to see how much money you have spent on 2k24 so far this year now i want you guys to look closely at this the picture is not the greatest quality the first one but this is 100 percent a change that 2k has made to the game you see first i want to shout out prize picks for sponsoring today's video Price picks is where you put your sports IQ to the test and can win up to 25 times your cash. It's easy. Just pick whatever sport you prefer in category, then make your picks. You may not even watch the NFL, but Price picks is doing a special right now for Thanksgiving, where if Christian McCaffrey rushes for one yard, you will win on his square. And if you click my link in the description to sign up for Price picks today and use code BADGEPLUG, Price picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Yes, double the first deposit. So thank you, Price picks for sponsoring the video. From October 11th right here, he says, heat checks, plus two-way tenacity look at the green window of this man's shot he could basically tap the button and it's gonna go in so when heat check first was actually fixed in october 10th i think is when that gigantic patch came out that gave us the real version of 2k24 if you guys don't know what i'm talking about most people say that's the patch that ruined the game well that's when heat check was in and now you can see from shoots tweet the other day this is the green window from heat check plus mamba mentality now which is of course got sharp shooting takeover in it when was this patched question mark question mark question mark so you see a gigantic difference now i don't think anyone can argue that when heat check first came out you shouldn't be able to just freely get a three where no matter how you time it it should go in but that's a pretty gigantic change to the green window and of course you can't find this anywhere. You can't see it on 2K Twitter, Ronnie 2K, LD 2K, Mike Wang, 2K's Discord, nothing, okay? And that makes me, plus a lot of consumers like you guys watching the video, upset. It makes us distrust 2K when they make changes and they don't say anything. It's one of the most annoying things that I've talked about for years now making these news, news videos that they just make changes and don't tell us why not tell us when you make a change to the game now anyway when fortnite came out and you know the og maps and all that ronnie 2k tweeted this out you might have seen it he said nba 2k og question mark now that's not really that important right but apparently some leaked dms came out from jada a girl who is in the 2k community she dropped some dms with ronnie 2k and this is what he had to say about, you know, OG games coming back. He said, not technically possible. I'm not a server engineer, so I wouldn't be the best person to ask, but I can say that imagine how much is stored per year, every piece of clothing, every staff, every win, loss, every my team card, every badge. Once it's taken down, it's impossible. There are development and engineering reasons beyond that, but that's possibly or probably the easiest explanation as we are both not in development or engineering. So I don't know, man. You know, Ronnie is known as the cap god, okay? He's even already gone way ahead of time and talked about how 2K is more expensive because it's like going to a movie theater. And that was passed down from the CEO himself, which we might talk about in a video later on. But look, I'm not one of those people that loses sleep because the OG 2Ks aren't coming back out. But at the same time, man... I don't know. It's pretty interesting to see Ronnie's explanation of that. Let me know if you guys believe him or not. But we got something interesting to look at. 2K16's clothing prices. <laughs> 5,000, 3,000, 3,000, 2,000. You can't find anything on there over like 6,000, 7,000 BC from the older 2Ks. But now you could get a little plain short, you know what I'm saying? Black shorts with no logo on it, nothing like that. And it's going to be 10,000 BC. If they're short shorts, it's going to be 15,000 BC. So anyway, 
I want to show y'all a test that came out from 2K Labs about Fearless Finisher. The make percent boost for contact layups is 13% at Hall of Fame, down to 4%. The sweet spot is obviously gold. And I want you guys to let me know how much you're enjoying 2K24. How much you're playing the game. Do you play it daily? Have you not played it in a week? I personally haven't played the game in like a week. I just went on like a five day road trip, seen a bunch of states because I'm trying to see every state. But I will be back on 2K soon. I just had to take a break, man. OG Fortnite came out, so that was cool to experience again. Call of Duty just came out, and I think the game's decent this year. You know, I had to take a little break. I can't play 2K all day. I don't know how some people do only play 2k and i think that's a big reason why a lot of people really dislike the game because how can you play one game throughout the year especially 2k i don't know anyway fearless finisher right here make percent boost at layup break points if you have a 96 rating you have a 22 percent more chance than a 70 uh layup at four percent and hey as y'all are watching right now this is me on my james harden build with a 99 layup and i can tell y'all man layups are comp and you know you guys already know they've been playing the game layups are much better this year than they have in the past now something again about the vc prices that i wanted to show is that 2k had a double level dominoes event or something like a pizza hut event where you have to buy a jersey to get double level and even that you see right here 6,000 VC. Now, of course, 6,000 VC isn't a lot, but it's just like 2K has just turned into the nickel and dime. Every single penny they can get out of you. Sixth, you already bought the game. You already purchased the game. You already purchased the build, jump shot boost, clothing, and now to get double level to participate with other people, you got to spend 6,000 BC just to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a never ending list. Of course, like I said, 6,000 isn't that big of a deal, but when you bring out the never ending list, it's just one of those things that even when you add small things to it, it's just like, oh my God, does it ever end? So anyway, speaking of never ending, my team has been in a crazy spot this year. A lot of the people in the my team community have been saying a lot of bad things about the game and you see right here 2k dropped a card where herb said my team mode has released a moments based digital card for tyrese maxi based on his 50 point performance as of now the card costs about 50 dollars or 30 hours of play time 30 are we not seeing an issue with this 30 hours of play time which of course I mean, even if you do the math, there's no reason if you really just had to have the car that you would not buy it. Like you could literally work, I don't know, six, seven hours at a part-time job and afford that card versus 30 hours of playing offline modes to get that. You know what I'm saying? Like that is insane. Or maybe it's not offline. I don't know. But still, 30 hours is insane. No one wants to do that. And just think about that. Seven hours, six hours at a job to afford one card on the game. Like, bro, I don't know what's going on. So DBG put this in some very good terms. He said this right here, who is a My Team YouTuber. He said, I don't know what's scarier. The fact that 2K strategy seems to be pushing, quote unquote, if you don't want to spend extra money weekly on the game, then don't play. Or the fact that it seems to be working. Seems like people have either conceded that they're going to spend money or have to quit playing the game. And honestly, if you don't see a problem with that, then you are the problem. Especially for people like me that have played video games long enough to remember when games used to come out complete. I mean, I'm talking about there wasn't any issues that needed to be patched and multiplayer was added three months in like some games do and so much more microtransactions has really been a huge downfall to gaming because they know Call of Duty 2k they have communities where people are going to buy the game every year it's not about getting people to really buy the game anymore it's about what they can spend once they buy the game how much more money can we get out of them and of course 2k is not the only one but they are very good at doing that and of course it always comes back down to voting with your wallet if you really don't want to see that in the game then don't buy it but of course that's not the way gaming is going right now so anyway 2k besides the microtransactions has some really really big problems that of course most of us know about but seeing it on video and pictures is crazy so you see right here from 2K Toots, he said, big fact about the shot mirror that you must know. In Blacktop, he's releasing the shot at the end of his window. In the My Court, it's not, okay? It's actually at like kind of a release. So every single different spot in the game 
has different releases, but it's only because of the latency. He has the same release on. You guys know how it's push and release and all that. He's got it on the same setting. Now look at this one right here. It's even crazier. In the black top, he's releasing at the top of his shot. In the park, the shot is literally, look at the meter. It is full and the shot's already out of his hand. The ball is freaking halfway to the basket. It's insane, bro. Now he also posted this video right here that was just mind blowing to me. So we got to check it out. So while I was testing for Gatorade Quartz, I was trying to measure the gap between the time I released the button and the time it hits the top of the shot meter. Because in that way, I can notice how much is the delay. Then I noticed that every sample have a huge gap to each other. Yes, if I compare the actual shot speeds, they're still the same, but in terms of the delay, there'll be times that it's totally different. In here, I'll be comparing two shots, and they were actually on the same session, and they're actually next to each other. And for the results, this one here have around 1 second gap, and the other one only have 0.73. So it means that aside from delaying your shot input, the latency itself keeps fluctuating. This reminds me of Agent Zero so much because that was the number one thing he would talk about. And it's still one of, if not the biggest issue besides, of course, microtransactions in 2K. The latency is so insanely bad. Some days you'll get on the game, it feels smooth, it feels good. The next day, it is literally the same game mode, but you got a different shot because latency, the servers are fluctuating and it's not consistent at all. On other games, you are not going to have that much latency. I can get on Call of Duty right now and I'll have a 20 to 30 millisecond latency. And by the way, on Call of Duty, they have a stat where you can see, you can turn on a setting. I don't know if you can do it on console, but on PC, you can turn on a setting that shows you your latency. 2K has never done that for obvious reasons because they know it's going to look bad. So anyway, yeah, it's just the latency is insane and it, ha I don't know, man. I guess they're never going to fix it, but it is huge in terms of, you know, where we're ranking it on the problem list. Now, challenge front percent for jump shots. I thought this was important. Malcolm Brogdon's a very good one at 13.90%. You might not know what this is, but just lower is better, basically. And TMAC is still the best one tested so far at 3.72%. So TMAC is super good. You see a side drift ratio right here for some releases. Oscar, Kyle Korver, Troy Brown, and Oscar Robertson's pretty good. Korver's good. I mean, these aren't really that big in terms of, you know, huge gaps. So all four of these are probably pretty good. Sadiq Bey, you could probably even use as well. But just know those are some good releases you can use. Oscar, Troy Brown, things like that. You see challenge front percent of Korver and Troy Brown are pretty decent as well. You got Oscar and then Kobe's 22%. So if you're using Kobe base, you might be getting contested a lot more. So just, hey, I'm just saying it because I know a lot of people are using Kobe base this year. And I honestly think Kobe base is still good, but you're going to get contested more than if you use like T-Mac or something like that. So anyway, the next one is the side drift ratios, a comparison between Oscar and Sadiq Bey. And you see Oscar is just really, really good. Okay. So these are advanced analytical things in the jump shots that 2K doesn't tell us. For some reason, I really think they should. But as you guys know, I get all my jump shots because they show the green window, which 2K does not show on 2k labs link is in the description use code badge plug when you sign up and hey i know it's an ad but i love 2k labs man shout them out for free for years and they give you all the best jump shots on stats like kind of like this that 2k just doesn't show you for some reason i don't know they want like the average player to just not know a lot of information one of the actually the most important thing about a jump shot the green window or release speed you know so it's right up there so next one is a test on fast twitch and we see right here no badge versus Hall of Fame, uh, really no difference. Basically zero difference at all. And 2K Labs did their own test where they found literally no difference on their test from, you know, Fast Twitch. But you see right here on a layup, no badge versus Hall of Fame, it's like the same exact thing. So this is another problem that we've talked about on this channel for years now is that there's so many badges that don't do anything. And if they do do anything, they barely do anything. I mean, you guys seen right there, the difference was just so minimal. There's no reason to go for fast switch on a build, right? So you could be looking at your build. And the issue with that is that you could be looking at your build and you went, oh, I went two more close shot for a higher fast switch. And now you see it does nothing or basically nothing, which kind of makes you feel like you wasted your money. Like you could have made a better build. You know what I'm saying? It's not about 
having the most meta overpowered build but it's just annoying when you're looking at it as a consumer and you're thinking of course you know going up on fast which is going to be faster for stuff and it's actually not you know what i'm saying so i don't know why people back 2k up for stuff like that but anyway a test came out about claymore and you see the sweet spot right there we've got bronze and nothing and then all the way up is silver gold and hall of fame so silver is it looks like the sweet spot for claymore if you've got at least silver claymore you should be good if you got golden hall of fame you're definitely good so this test just came out actually today about green machine of course both these channels are amazing by the way if you guys aren't subscribed to them 2k toots and 2k labs i just like to show you know a quick overview of a lot of their videos they've dropped on here green machine you see is pretty good as well it actually does go up and it looks like the sweet spot is silver but of course green or, or sorry gold and hall of fame are still good as well so they're going to help but silver is definitely the sweet spot where it jumps the most from one badge to the next so i think 2k did a great job on that you know i can tell 2k they did good and then i can also tell 2k they did bad you know what i'm saying i give you guys a completely non-biased opinion looking at stats and things like that of the game and i've rarely rarely talk about what i think how gameplay should be changed this year because you know that's very opinion based but if i do talk about stuff like that i try to make it as non-biased as possible because i do everything i play every position and and I just want the best for the game and balance to make a good game. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I was just letting you guys know in case you're new. Triple Strike was tested 10% at Bronze all the way up to 16.4% at Hall of Fame. Now, this actually is a 6% jump, which might not look that big, but could definitely be big. It's really, you know, in your opinion. There is a Triple Strike glitch, if you guys don't know. Not really a glitch, but basically you're in the Triple Threat and you tap to the right. And as soon as you tap to the right, you run and it gives you a really nice speed boost. So, you know, that could be a big advantage for having a higher triple strike as well and you see why does hate get more interactions than positivity from job bridgeforth who tweeted about 2k24 is the worst 2k of all time 447 likes 2k is the best of all time nine likes now of course there could just be a high amount of people that think it's the worst 2k ever versus the best but that's a pretty big difference right there you know what i'm saying so anyway spillboy went to twitter and he said can we get bright consistent lighting in the gatorade facility bro the gatorade facility is destroyed this year we just seen how bad the latency was in there it's been viral a few times the lighting is terrible look i'm gonna tell you all right now my opinion on this i'm not saying 2k has to change it but the lighting in the parks i don't care about it being realistic i think it's one of the worst things added to the park i mean it's bro you'll be playing a twos game and it's like half the core is shiny you know with the sun shining on it and then half the core is shaded and then the next thing you know 95 percent or, or the whole entire core is dark i don't like that um maybe you guys do but that's my opinion on it i think it's not good anyway dimework said so when you win they kick you out of the lobby and disband your team in the wreck but when you lose now they try to lock you back in with the same dudes this company is insane so i don't know if that has been fixed but i thought it would be funny to show y'all and see if you're experiencing the same thing so look i know you probably haven't seen this year maybe you don't care about the game but you still want to see it right check this video out right here where i went back to last gen ancient gen prehistoric gen 2k24 to see what the game looks like this year because almost nobody has posted about it so this is me playing a last gen 2k24 and finding out if the game is good or not all right click it tap it it's your boy bash you've been plugged in click it bro i'm about to be out of here and i'm out